Is it true? Has Tor been compromised again by the FBI? Are they watching everything you do, putting you on a watch list if you use a website like Tor? We're going to break this down and a whole bunch more today on Operation Dark Web. A lot of people have been talking about Tor and the FBI and other alphabet letter agencies attacking people using this program. Now, Tor is a phenomenal browser, and most of you are familiar with how it works. If you're not, I've done videos breaking this down. But do they really put you on a list if you use Tor? That's really what we want to talk about. We want to talk about best practices if you're using the dark web and Tor to maybe stay off these FBI watch lists, but more than that, to make sure you can navigate properly. Now, before we dive into that, I recently just launched the Privacy X Project podcast. Link will be down below. Check it out. We've got the first couple episodes out. Really excited about the podcast. Putting out daily episodes for the first 30 days to kick it off. So make sure you go to privacyxproject.com and check out the new podcast. All right, so with Tor, it's a pretty interesting phenomenon. Now, Usually, as I've showed before, I will use something like VirtualBox and Hunix, or you can use Ubuntu, you could use something like Cubes, which I'm a big fan of. Basically, you'll have a virtual machine for your operating system. Always a good practice, but even on your smartphone, iPhone, or if you have an Android, you could use something like the Onion Browser, or you could use Tor. Now, Tor will bounce to multiple different relays ultimately your exit node, it'll take you all around the globe in a matter of seconds, and it's supposed to anonymize you as a user. And the thing with Tor is more and more people have been using it, millions of people over the last several years, has really helped hide in plain sight. And that's the fundamental feature that adds the most value is the ability to hide in plain sight and the ability to be able to be an anonymous user. Now the FBI and the other alphabet agencies have known about this for a long time, and they've been trying to crack the code. There's been talk that they have, there's been talk that they have not. Obviously, they're gonna put out information to make you think that they could do more than they can do in this scenario. But really, it doesn't come down to using Tor. It's not illegal. It's not illegal to go on Dot Onion or the deep web. What's illegal is if you take action on some of these illegal websites. So I think the FBI could probably track many of these sites, and I think they probably do for good reason. You've seen things like Silk Road, which got shut down years ago. Dread Pirate Roberts. You've seen the things come out with all the illegal activity that can be found on the dark web. I do not recommend you have your kids go on the dark web, but using it for anonymity purposes might be a good idea because we're at a crossroad. On one side, we've got Tor, on the other side, we've got big tech, big data, big brother spying on every single thing we do from our devices to our personal computers. And if this is a scenario where we've got to pick a side, well, going for your privacy and anonymity is always a great option, but you need to keep in mind when you're going through this process, you want to not overstep the bounds. Now, if you use a VPN, which I've talked about, I use Proton VPN and Private Internet Access VPN. No, I'm not an affiliate. I'm just a happy customer. But if you use a VPN, get on the tour, you're trying to, Bluebird Pal, you're trying to have an anonymous IP address, then going through tour, then you're in a pretty good place. Now, ideally, if you're using a virtual machine like VirtualBox and then using something like Hunix or like Cubes or one of these other OSs, then you potentially could be in a pretty safe space. Now keep in mind, all of this is for your anonymity, not so much to do anything nefarious or illegal. I don't recommend doing anything illegal on the internet or otherwise. So if you're trying to commit crimes, a lot of people on there, and what happens is it's not just about committing a crime, it's about wrong place, wrong time. And that's part of the problem with Tor. And so you really gotta watch the way that some of these sites will attack you because the FBI has seen a lot of people go through these different scams. So you can go to a website, click on something. It is a cloned website. Then you've downloaded something on your computer and the FBI shows up knocking on your door because you downloaded 
some illegal stuff to your computer, but you just thought you were on a regular website that you go to all the time. And so that's really where you got to be careful. And if somebody backtracks you from an exit node like Tor, can they? What can they do? Can they get to you? So as we start to pivot into the blockchain technology, if you haven't already, make sure you follow me over on Odyssey. Odyssey is incredible. Been growing slowly but surely over there. And I love the idea of library and blockchain technology. They have a library coin or library credits. Starting to decentralize. I think, I think eventually Tor will start to go to the wayside a little bit because it's been so heavily monitored and investigated by agencies with the alphabet letters in front of their name. But I think as we go more decentralized, as we go more blockchain, as we try to anonymize sites and addresses and owners similar to how you try to anonymize your blockchain wallet, which if you keep it private, potential, or as we have more privacy features like Monero, the one of the better privacy coins, as we see this technology shift into the core OS of using the internet, not just the operating system, but your operating experience, how you navigate through the web, I think that's going to help give you some possibilities for privacy. But on the other side, you've got to be careful that you're not setting up a structure that is monitored, that is being scanned. So with Tor, right now Tor is one of the best tools to be able to surf the web anonymously. And that's why a lot of people are trying to crack the code. Now Tor has some very practical value in other countries where things can be blocked or for journalists, but in a scenario like what we've seen a lot with the FBI trying to track users and people say, well, what if they put me on a list? Well, here's the problem. When Tor has millions and millions of people using Tor, what list, right? What list are they going to put you on? A list of 20 million people? You know, when Edward Snowden released that the government was virtually spying on everyone, well, then they have the ability to take action against no one. So again, you're hiding in plain sight. And so if Tor had 200,000 users, then it might be possible for the government to put all of them on a list and try to allocate some resources to categorize that list into the highest potential threats. But now that Tor has become more mainstream and millions and millions and millions of people are using it, it's talked about all the time, every day, and people are using it just for their regular browser, you got the Onion browser on iOS, you got Tor on Android, and people are using it both on mobile and on desktop platforms. The application can cross platform on all your devices. Well, then it makes it a lot tougher as Tor has their own small piece of the market share. And while they only have a small fraction of the browser market, a small fraction of the browser market is still extremely hard to track when you have a list of millions and millions of people. And so you become hidden in plain sight. So yes, if you're doing illegal and nefarious activities, Tor does not make you a ghost. You will get caught. Lots of people have been caught off Tor. But these lists, you're probably on a hundred different lists. We live in a world where all the government does and all big tech and big data do is categorize everything you do, everything you say, all the actions you take, all the interests, hobbies, all your thoughts. I mean, you literally type your thoughts into Google. And they categorize your thoughts. They catalog your thoughts. It's connected to an IP address. And even if it's not, machine learning has gotten so good already, even though it's not very impressive yet, but it's gotten good to the point where they can, they've got algorithms that can, that can take your behavior and narrow it down based on the consistency of your behavior. And this is the problem that a lot of people don't understand is they don't have to get directly to you they could get a guess that is right 99% of the time based on the things you do. And nowadays with things like voice prints and facial recognition, whether you partake or not, the internet is constantly being scanned and scraped for all the data. And so even with Tor being a great option for a lot of people who need it, in America it's been a haven for, trying, for privacy advocates and people trying to have a little bit of privacy and anonymity and not put every piece of data about themselves out there because it's not so much about the now. Yeah, for stalking and, and things like that, being private is very important. 
But I think a lot of privacy advocates like myself are not just thinking about today, we're thinking about 10, 15 years down the road and what we have now being used against us down then. And so it's taking action early and often right now. Anyway, that's what I got to say about Tor. So do I think you should use it? In my opinion, yeah, I use it. So, but all that's all my opinion. Is the FBI monitoring and scraping it? Of course they are. Of course they are. Anyway, if you haven't already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, take action, go all in every single day. And your first step, go check out the podcast. I'll see you guys tomorrow.